record at, at your leisure, Brian. So Brian's gonna record. I'm gonna try and uh, let's keep let's keep it to five minutes. Um, just to be clear, this is not me teaching all of these topics for the first time. This is review, so like hopefully you remember about this already. Um, but like let's hit the highlights. So we talked about the atomic theory of rational functions, which was the name I made up, that was supposed to evoke this idea that to figure out where zeros and removable discontinuities and vertical asymptotes are, um, you can't tell unless you can completely factor the numerator and the denominator. Um, so let, let's factor the denominator. So I'm seeing a 2x common to all three of these terms. So we'll write 2x, and now this becomes uh, x squared, and this is 2x, and this is 2. One. No, it's 1. And, one. Oh, thank you, 1. And then this also factors as x plus 1 squared. Yeah, yeah. Great. Okay, so that's the new denominator. That's the numerator. Um, so we have the situation where uh, if you have the same factor in the numerator and the denominator, let's look at the, uh, was getting hard to read. So if we've got an x in the numerator and an x in the denominator. You could imagine pulling that x over x out um, and realize that whatever value you plug in, um, as long as it's not zero, you'll have a number over itself. And so that part of the numerator and the denominator is not actually affecting the y values at all because that part is going to ultimately end up just being one. So the only effect that, this, that those two factors have on this curve is by inserting a hole at the x value that would make this undefined. So you know when the denominator is zero, you get an undefined value. So this, this is just inserting a hole at x equals zero, removable discontinuity. OK, um, but what about this case? So in this case, we've got x plus 1 in the numerator, x plus 1 in the denominator squared. So you could imagine pulling out one set of the x plus 1 over x plus 1. So that feels like, oh, there's a removable discontinuity there at, at x is negative 1. Um, but notice we have one x plus 1 left over in the denominator. So the ultimate test about what's happening at the value negative 1 is what would happen if you plugged in x values that were approaching the undefined value? As, uh, what would happen if x values were approaching negative 1? So imagine plugging in like uh, negative 0.9, negative 0.99, negative 0.999, negative 0.9999. So getting closer to that negative 1. This x plus 1 over x plus 1, those are dividing each other. So that's not changing the y values at all. Here, if I'm plugging in values that are like, uh, imagine I plug in negative 0.99. So 1 minus 0.99 is 0 0.001, so a very small number. And what happens when you divide by a very, very small number? It's like the, the entire y value is going to get very large. It's like uh, dividing by 1 one hundredth is the same thing as multiplying by 100. So that's why that would create a vertical asymptote, because as the x values are approaching that x value that would create the undefined value, you'd see, you see that you're getting large, uh, sorry, smaller and smaller values in the denominator approaching 0, which is producing larger and larger y values. Um, so you know that was fairly brief. We went through it kind of at greater length before the break, but hopefully you can recreate that for yourself if you need to. Um, and then zeros, you're going to get whenever you have a numerator that's zero and a denominator that is not zero, because zero divided by any non-zero number is just zero. Um, so that would be at x equals one. Pause.